Welcome to East River Dairy. This is our, uh, we're starting our tour here in the maternity barn. This is where all the babies are born. So there's about 24 cows over in this side. They're all due to calf calves within uh, a week or 10 days. And so there's people come check on the cows every few hours and when there's one getting ready to freshen they move them over into one of these pens. So you just you just missed the bird. Aw. About two minutes. That's okay. <laughs> Well, that calf, this calf can't stand up yet. She will be, within a half an hour, that calf will be able to stand up. She's just born, she's all wet, the mother's licking her off. That's the mother's first calf. So she's kind of getting used to the idea. <laughs> mm -hmm. couple hours. A couple hours old? Yeah. So they, they, as soon as they're born, we put, uh, you can see they have an ear tag. If they're a heifer, they get an ear tag. And uh, they dip their navels with iodine to make sure that no infection goes in. And then we bed, the, we bed these stalls between every every calving so they have a fresh, fresh bed. The calves stay with the cows for uh, two, anywhere from two to eight hours, I'd say, depending on what time of day they're born. And then the, the cow yeah, goes mommy. to get milked and the calf goes to a hutch. And we'll, we'll, we'll see the, where the calves go next. A little later, we'll see the feed mixing uh, facility. But every every group of cows has their uh, uh, diet specially made for them. and the, the the fresh cows, or the springing, full springing cows, need a bulky diet, but not too too much energy yet, because they, uh, if you feed them too much energy too fast, their their udders will swell too much, and they're more likely to get uh, what we call milk fever, which makes the cow go into paralysis and can't get up, it leads to all kinds of problems. So we need to manage the diet so they don't have these problems and we have pretty good success doing that so there's quite a you can see there's quite a lot of hay in this mix there's some corn silage and a little bit of corn meal and some uh, soybean meal and it's all mixed up so every bite they eat is supposed to be the same balance for their needs for the cart pulls a cart and it's got a motor on it and then, then it's a, like a little gas like you're pumping gas and they put all the so we feed them all milk from the we have a group of cows that's treated it's we milk that just the milk from that group just goes for these calves oh okay so the, the, some of them we can feed the milk that's treated with antibiotics you can never ship that milk it, mm. it, it, it gets in the milk tank it ruins the whole tank you can get stuck you can't they test that numerous times before it gets to the so they when they talk about there being antibiotics in milk there just isn't any mm -hmm. they, they, there's so many tests along the way they don't and they in the the minute they can test the parts per billion so it's we don't we don't allow it to get in the but the the calves can drink that milk without any problem and then we put some other so the cows that have had mastitis or it really leads to a higher white blood cell count and that reduces the milk quality so we'll take the, the cows that test the highest for that and put them in that group and then they feed the calves so okay. then that milk gets pasteurized we got a pasteurizer there i'll show you okay when we get down there and uh we'll see the cart too but they drive the cart through here and then squirt the milk into the pails and the, the very youngest ones get fed on these, they, they feed them with bottles, and these are bottle holders, and they just oh. drop, a, drop a bottle in there, and then the calf drinks on that, but when they get about a week or 10 days old, they get them trained to drink out of a pail. <laughs> and the yellow on them is the iodine, right? Yes. So these are some of the youngest ones. So they fill them by rows as they go, and then the next row gets cleaned. So they're here for about uh, seven or eight weeks, and then they move to this barn. There's two. We have two barns like this, but you'll see you'll see one of on the other ones four miles away. 
under underneath the beds so the pee goes down through the stones so that it keeps the bedding dry and uh, then we put the landscape fabric on there which also protects uh, against moisture and bacteria so uh, the cleaner you can keep it the, the better off we all are or they are the better off the calves are so they they all get washed with a power washer between calves and then they're brought back and put back in the in the line here's their little cages that'll be uh, as they put a calf in there and then they bed it and then put the cage back there and, the, and then it'll look like that other yeah that's about the size right there uh -huh. these are bigger ones yeah so they're about ready to wean so she, she may already have weaned that's i'm not sure where the line is but they they leave them in here for a little while after they're weaned so they get used to eating grain so they they get little pellets. Looks like the pellets are on the inside of their huts there, the tail. There's a beauty there. Oh boy. Ooh. You like that one? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> That's boy. So here we have these free stalls, which is where the adult cows live in free stalls. And they get so in this group they get used to the free stalls. So and they dip very very fast. They they learn you can see some of those laying. See how they lay in there. Oh, in the uh, middle. This there. row's pretty much full. The back row is, is empty, but they just got fed. <laughs> so they're, they're all interested in that. <laughs> The biggest ones out of here, they move every every week. I think they move some out and they go into the, well, the next barn. Oh, so they're growing here, and then eventually when they get big enough, they move over here, and then that's where they get bred. Well, you can see these with the, the neck, the blue neck. The necklaces, yeah. And that's a, that's a system that monitors their activity, and we know when the cows come, when the heifers come to eat, they get a lot more active. They're running all over the place. They're probably three times more active than normal. So it tracks their normal activity, and then it, it recognizes that they're moving a lot more than normal. And a signal goes into the office there, and you go in there and you got a list of who's breed that day. So like it's a Fitbit for cows. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> Yeah, I got my fit that on. <laughs> this is where we prepare the calf milk, and we got a, a little storage tank over here for, for the calf milk. And the pasteurizer is right here. It's a series of plates, alternate plates, and we run, we pipe hot water through. Every other plate is hot water at 160 degrees or something like that, 170. And then every other plate is milk. So it, pumps it through there and it heats it up to and it circulates it from this tank through there until the whole batch is up to 150 degrees and holds it there for a set. So there's a control box right there and it has to stay at 150 for, I forget the, I used to know, but it's <laughs> a certain number of minutes and um, maybe 30 minutes or something like that and then it's a minute pumps cool water through there and cools it back down and it gets back down to 100 so it wants to be about 100 well by the time they transport it so they probably take it out at 110 by the time they pump it in this cart and then they pull that cart through the through the hutches up there and the, uh, right there's the so it's like a gas pump so oh yep there what it is they yeah. them out with. And they so, fill the bottles with that too here or up there? Yeah, I think she she fills the bottles here and then puts a rack of uh, and carries it on the cart with her. So uh, the littlest ones drink out of the bottles and, the, and as they learn they So the the pasteurization made a big improvement in our we used to feed just raw milk. Two tanks that we restore the milk. This one we just put in, it's a used bulk tank, but we built this room, we needed more, more storage space, so, uh, so you're milking, when we get, so you're milking almost around the clock, they don't, 
don't have time. It works pretty well. I have two tanks, so they come to get the, the milk out of one, you can still be milking in the other. Oh, and yeah. And you have to have so much time to get it washed. And, and what's the process for that to wash it? And So there's an automatic washer right here. So this, uh, we put soap in one and yeah, detergent and acid goes in this one. So that runs a rinse. It's all automatic. They hook the pipes up and then they push start and it runs a, a warm rinse and then it runs hot water with the soap and then after that's done they do a rinse with acid so that pretty much keeps all the bacteria yep. out. <laughs> Various problems. So this one has a sore foot. They, they might, if they get mastitis they come in here. If they, sometimes it weakens them for a few days. Most of the time they'll recover, but they need medicine. And we, so they get milked in a separate group, and you have, that's where the milk from the, goes to the calves instead. It can pick yep. ends up in those tanks. You have to be very careful. That, that's, a, that's a bad thing. So here's this is called the holding area, and they're just bringing the first group in to get milk. So all the Jersey cows are in this barn. It's an older barn, and some of the stalls are smaller, and it, the Jerseys are smaller cows. So it, fits them and then all the fresh cows are here and all the treated cows are here and over in that barn is all main milking uh, Holsteins. Oh there they go, they're going, now they're going in the car. See how full they are? Oh yeah, <laughs> they're ready. So that's an iodine solution to, uh, to put on. So if first he strips the cow, he's looking for, for abnormal milk, and it helps stimulate the cow. So then he to put the iodine on there to prevent transmission of infection, and then he uses an individual towel to, to wipe every cow before he puts the milk on. And we do that in a sequence, so he does five or six cows of the forward time, I guess, first four. Then he'll go back and put the milkers in and then I'll do the other four. Because the timing is important because once you start to stimulate the cow in about a, about a minute, she's gonna have a letdown. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and so. horsepower motor and it, so it turns very fast and makes let's see the I'll find the cornmeal is. Wow. 
so the, the finer the grain the better it is because it, it helps the cows digest it so when you mix it with all the all the forage the hay and all that stuff uh, it's easier for them to digest when it's when it's ground that fine so you get more more milk out of the out of the feed you could feed it coarser but it usually will go right through the cow comes out of the manure this way they make make full use of it so the the wagon there's a tractor and wagon comes in here and parks right under the uh, all those pipes and the operator has a menu we have a nutritionist uh, that formulates rations depending on the whether the cow is just freshened or she's bred back and in the middle of her lactation or if she's dry or the heifers they all get every every group gets a different ration wow. and he brings up he knows which one he's going to do next and he's got a little list in the on the computer he pushes the button and says this is 10 so and so and the first ingredient comes up and it may be soybean meal and he knows which one of these soybean meal and he pushes it and there's a scale on the wagon and the, so it may be called for 430 pounds of soybean meal and as it fills that number goes down it counts backwards until it gets to zero so he he knows he's got to stop just a little before it gets to zero and then he's once they get used to doing that they're very accurate so the, the, you don't waste if you, if you get it out of balance it's kind of like wasting the feed they, they need a certain amount but they don't need more so uh, recipes are right there so there's all the groups there's 13 groups or something like that and the high cows there's two pens of high cows over in that barn four and six and two pens of first lactation uh, two and three and two pens of what we call low cows one and five and each has so these heifer groups are the same. They have the same ration and the high cows have the same ration. So what they do with, in that case, they make one batch in the morning and split it between the two groups and then they feed them again later in the day. So mm -hmm. they get if, uh, more frequent. Uh, multiple feedings is usually better than just one in the day because when they, when they get fresh feed put in front of them, they all get up and come eat. Yeah. And so they, it encourages more consumption and more consumption makes more milk. So. So this this feed ingredient is made from candy bars. So we feed our cows every day a little bit of candy. About uh, I think they get two two and a half pounds of candy bars every day in part of their in their mix. So it's uh, candy bars that either didn't manufacture right. There was a, re a rejects rejects at the at the plant, or they were in the store too long and got returned and ground up into cow feed. So the our cows get uh, a, a little treat. <laughs> 12 gallons of water. And uh, when the cow, so my foot can hit the hard ground. But uh, when I lay down on there, if I lay down on there, or if a cow lays down on there, it, 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 it balances her weight so she's up. She's really soft. She has a soft cushion under her whole body. Yeah. That's the purpose. That's really cool. Get off. 
much taken the tour at East River Dairy. We've looked at the from the, the time the calves were born uh, on through their growth stages as they grew up to be larger calves than heifers and then they got bred and then they came to the milking barn and got milked and you saw the water beds and the feed station of how the feed is mixed and uh, how the milk is cooled and uh, the cart where the calves were fed uh, where the the gas pump. Yeah. <laughs> so there's about 1,500 milking cows here on this farm and about 1,300 uh, calves and heifers that will someday be milking cows. So that, that's, uh, and there's about 20 people uh, that work here besides, the, and then five, well, it's more than 20. It's probably 25 altogether, counting the owners. So there's, there's five active owners and we all uh, have different duties that we do on the farm. Uh, uh, what else? We're glad you were able to join us today and if you have any questions at any time, glad to answer any questions you have.